Hello everybody and welcome back to Goldcrest Valley on Farming Simulator 17. In the previous video we did put this here and I didn't really get around to actually unloading it. So that's what we should probably do first of all today. But also today we do need to do some spraying. And uh, I was hoping to do a bit of forestry as well but we'll have to see. I was just looking at the combine harvester. And we have that harvester on pretty much every map. Whether it's a Massey Ferguson or a Reskin. So I think at some point it would be quite nice to replace it with something different. Not necessarily this map, but on one of the maps. Possibly the Wexcom Manor Farm map. Because that one is, well, it's the newest map that we're doing. And, uh, well, I like it a lot. Oh, no. We are, this happens every single time I move stuff. I have to remove the strap next to the one we're picking up. Otherwise it tends to get stuck. But this is going to go just in here. I probably should give myself a little bit more space. It's a bit too tight here, but we'll be okay. Only two crates to do anyway. Is it just two? Yeah, just two. So this will be easy enough. Okay, crate number one. And finally, crate number two. Also, thank you very much to everybody who did quite right to point out last week that the uh, T5, I did incorrectly say that it could only be used for spraying due to the road crop size, but you can, oh hang on, you can in fact um, replace them in the farm workshop. So I did get that wrong. So uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for telling me because otherwise I'd have probably been going the whole series just saying, oh no, we can't use that because it's got road crop size, even though we can go back to the standard ties. Right, there we go. Done. The rest of this here is going to stay on the trailer. As I've said before, this is going to be used probably at the cow farm for the total mixed ration. So we'll keep them strapped on and yeah, that's going to be it for the money to today. We'll just put it over here. And then we'll jump into the New Holland. Now the field which needs to be fertilised is the one which we did the cover crop in. I still to this day get quite a few questions asking me what a cover crop is. Basically it's a crop which you plant as a natural fertiliser to culti cultivate back in again or plough back in again so that you get very fertile ground. That is just a very basic summary of what a, a cover crop is. But yeah, that is the general idea. So I'm just going to go over here, go to the workshop, because, yeah, never done it before, but as you've said, oh, we don't want to customise the dreaded sprayer. Let me just put this over here. Yeah, so you want to customise the tractor. So I should be able to see, it, it shouldn't cost us any more for standard tyres. Yes, there you go, zero. So yes, thank you. For letting me know, I wouldn't have known otherwise. I probably would have worked it out eventually, but it takes me a while to get used to stuff. It's just the way I am. But today we do need the row crop ties, so all we're going to need is some liquid fertilizer. We do have some over here in the IBC. And we've got quite a good store here. I don't know if we should store the fertilizer with the seed, but we are doing just for today. Hopefully that fits the top. Good. Fantastic. And yes, here we go. Onto the map, as you see. So, field 19 is good. Field 24 has got no fertilizer on it at all. Same with 14. Field 8 is okay, though. So, yeah. I, I think 24 is going to be our priority. Although, it's ready to harvest. So that is a bit of an issue. But I think we should still do it because otherwise we are really going to be lacking in uh, yield here. It's going to look a little bit strange spraying this crop as it is, but yeah, it's worth it, definitely. And then we'll come back and do field 14 as that needs to be done too. Now I also haven't done any sort of uh, contracting jobs recently. I think it was nice to do them. I do want to do a few more. But I think for video purposes there's only so many you can do before it gets a bit repetitive. 
but certainly we'll do more, possibly today. Now to do this job I'm going to be using the GPS. This tractor is built in with GPS as you can see here, near the door there, or window. Yeah, New Holland do have doors on the right hand side don't they? Some tractors don't, most do. It's looking a bit thin this crop. So that's quite good. Just there. So I think that is fairly central. It looks central. Although, yes, that's not right. We need to set that across a bit, of course. It's about there. And auto set this. That's fine. Put the GPS on. Put it onto uh, cruise control. And off we go. So yeah, it's not something you'd see every day, I don't think. But it's going to be worth it. I will just check to make sure it's actually working as well. Otherwise, this would be a total waste of time. But it should work. Yes, it is. Good. I did just see the blue, the light blue mark there. All right, stopped. That means we're wasting fertilizer. And when we get to the end of here, I'll press auto turn. I'm starting to get used to it. So it's it's good function, very good function. But I need to remember to turn the sprayer off first. Very important. As you can see, it's doing all four is. And it'll be perfectly aligned going back down here again. So yeah, there's a lot to be said for GPS. It is very good. Okay, so I think we are virtually finished. We just have to auto steer to the right once more. And then we will be done. So I'm going to switch that off there. Turn right automatically. Watch the traffic. And, and put the sprayer back on again. Now is that going to be reaching to the edge? I think it is. Look at that. This field is obviously designed to be perfect for the sprayer. That couldn't have been a better fit. We have got absolutely 0% wastage here. And when we do finish, I'll just go onto the map again and show you that we have put one layer of fertilizer on here. Obviously this field is never going to be 100% productive because I've missed two stages of fertilizer. Um, but at least he's got something. It'll be 30% more than what it would have been. 30% more is obviously pretty decent. Especially these days. So, <laughs> there we go. We'll turn it off. And we'll take a look at the map. Let's just see. Here we go. Finally, we have another blue field. Uh, field number 23 isn't ours, so I'm surprised that farmer isn't fertilizing it. Weird. So field 14 is the final one we need to do, although that is poplars. So maybe we should do field 15. Yeah. Field 15 may be a better one to do because that is corn. I don't know if the fertilizer does affect the productivity of poplars. I have asked the question before and it was a very, very mixed response that I got. Like some people said, yes you do have to, and some people said, no you don't, and it was about 50-50. So, I don't know. <laughs> All we can do is try it out for ourselves, I think, but I think we don't, well, I don't suppose we need to spray it. We'll be harvesting it very soon. But here we are, this is the maize field. This will take no time at all. This is a harder field to do though with the auto steer. We might have to do it ourselves. Uh, after all, we are still human. We can still turn a wheel. Right, that is obviously set way across. That should be okay. Is that actually working? Just see. No. 
So I would say that it's already been fertilized for this stage, so we can't do it. It is only one fertilization stage per growth stage, if you get what I mean. <laughs> yes, so we'll have to come back to that later on. So for today, we'll put this away. We can still fertilize it, but we're going to have to wait for it to grow a bit. We'll put this back into the shed. But no, I think the T5 is a good tractor for the spray. Just something about it really does suit it. And I suppose we don't even have to be in that side there. We could go in here with all of the other chemicals and seed and everything. Which can't go too far back as I know there is some uh, fertilizer back there. We don't want to plow through it. Right, so with that done as well, that's two jobs done, we can now progress further. And yeah, what I really wanted to do was to do a bit of forestry, but I'm not sure if we're going to. I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, I will just check on the animals because obviously that's quite important as well. So cleanliness is obviously awful. Oh, we should probably move the uh, Lely Juno to the pigs. Yes. Do we have anything over there? Don't think we do. We could drive it ourselves. It would be very slow, but it would also be very hilarious. Um, no, I, th I think we probably should transport it on a tractor. Yes. Um, yeah, I know I'm not the best at using this thing. There are some brilliant tutorials out there. I have watched them, but I think, you know, because <laughs> this is just the way I am, I'm gonna just stick with my awful method as awful as it is, I know. Um, but yeah, let me just um, put it out to uh, be able to be transported. Which I think is with that thing there. And now we'll tab across to a tractor. Maybe this one. Yep, this one will do. Now you can move it on anything. You can move it on a telehandler, you can move it on a tractor. Pretty much anything which can pick something up, I believe. So... Um, yeah, I just prefer using the tractor. There's the poplars. Are they growing well? Hmm. What's the growth rate like? It is on slow. I'll put it on normal. Otherwise it would be a bit too slow. There is a field just back there. It's sugar beet. I feel like harvesting some sugar beet, so we might do that. Oh no, I've come out the wrong place again. This never looks very professional. So when we've moved this Lely Juno, I think we will do. We'll do a bit of a contracting job. Now where is the turning? Any of these. Here are the cows. They're producing some slurry and some manure. And can we put this on the back? It would probably look safer on the back. We can, good. Even though it still looks absolutely crazy. Now ideally, we should have one of these at every every place, like one of the pigs, one of the cows and one of the sheep. But they are, I think, £12,000 each. So pretty expensive equipment, especially when you can just use, for example, the Manny 2 with a bucket. But I like the idea of it. Yeah, this field just up here. This is the one I'm looking at and, well, I don't know how much money we would get from it. It's not huge, but I'm guessing they're going to be using the trailed harvester. The trailed harvester is nice, but it's just very, very slow. So the time they're going to put on this is probably huge. Six minutes, 22. Ah, that's because it's spraying. We'll come back to it. Actually, no, we won't come back to it. We'll do that now. We'll get that done using a different machine. Oh, wow. <laughs> using the Fent Farmer. I'll take it. 
I like this tractor. I don't know what it is about it, but I just love it. I didn't know they would put mods into the contracting jobs. Now, I doubt the Fent Farmer is going to have GPS, so we'll have to do it our own way. The problem with doing it my own way is it's totally obliterating the crop. As I'm not driving very straight, it looks awful. But it will all return once we finish this job. So actually, none of the crops are lost. Good job, otherwise it would be terrible. There'd be literally nothing left at all. But they're so detailed, these tractors. They look so good. They're very basic, but that's how they are. Basic can be good. Oh my goodness, look at that. That looks absolutely horrific. I'm certainly blitzing this job. I think I've missed a bit. We're running out of time. Right, so we've got the money and... Yep, the field is back to normal. Thank you. Goodness, otherwise that would have been awful. Uh, right, so we just have to wait for the next job to appear. So the fertilizer has to be washed in, it has to do its job. And yeah, they're still growing. They're not quite ready, so it might not be today. We'll continue our journey up to the pig farm after that awful attempt at fertilizing. That's the thing with the smaller stuff. <laughs> if you don't use GPS, it is quite hard to make it very neat. Especially if you're timed. If you're doing it in your own time, it would be much easier. But no, that was nice. I, I like to use the fent. Nice fent, that. Now we just have to use this thing on the back. I am just going to literally drive it as I did before. Some of you will probably hate that. But it's actually a very, very small work area over at the pigs, so... It's not going to take very long at all, and we can empty it straight into the trough. He's still there, little Lily. Here we go. And it is very, very messy. drop it too hard. We seem to have less pigs than normal. It looks like we've got less. That's weird. Close that up. Right. So we have to put the beacon on straight away. It is unloading directly into the trough. There we go, you see? Nice and neat. Wasn't too hard. Good, so we don't have a charging station here, but it doesn't really matter. It's just to keep the maintenance fee down. Park it here. Turn it off. And yes, it should go to 100% clean. I don't know what's quicker really, using that or using the uh, bucket. I suppose a bucket is slower because you've got to move it about and stuff. Oh no, you've spilt more. You messy eaters. 100% clean. Brilliant. Now just the sheep, but the sheep are okay for now. We'll leave them. Um, the next animal is in one and a half hours. They've got, we've got 27. 27 pigs. Impressive. How many did we buy in the first place? Was it about 12? I think it was. Yeah, it wasn't that many. Anyway, we'll head back down to that farm again. And we'll see if they need a hand with the harvest. If it's not at the harvesting stage, then obviously we're going to wait but it would be nice to do some. Very nice to do a bit of harvesting. And here we are back at the field. There is another field just over there, but it's probably at the same stage. 
we shall see. And it's very important I don't park too close to the spawn place for the other uh, machines. It doesn't look ready, it looks too small. Maybe we can do some more fertilizing. No, everything is done there, so we're just gonna have to wait. Probably, probably in the next episode we'll be able to do it, I'd have thought. So let's just start it up again. Uh, we'll see what this field over here needs, because we could fertilize this as well. It would be with a bigger machine. That is the good thing about the contracting, it is just pretty much instant money. Just do a job, get paid. Whereas if we're doing our own fields, then we'd have to obviously grow the crop, then harvest the crop, and then eventually we'd be paid from whatever yield there is. No space. Always go too close. Go over here. I should do. Right, so that is ready to harvest. 77 minutes. I would do it, but we've done a big sugar beet harvesting job before, and to be honest, it took a very long time. Um, and the pay now isn't as good, so I think we'll probably try and find a different job to do. I want to do sugar beet harvesting, but just not a field that big. It is just too big. So let's have a bit of a, a tour, try and find a different job to do. What's this field over here? Where is the marker for it? This also is a huge, oh it's over here. This also is a huge field. It looks like it needs to be seeded. We can seed it, we we'll use GPS if that is the job that's required. Otherwise, I'm guessing it'll be fertilizing. Most likely slurry. I think you'd usually do that before cultivating, I'm not too sure. Let's just see. Let's see what they've got to say. Yes, it is indeed slurry. We'll do it, um, but I'll just turn this off. Slurry is quite a fun job, especially with this massive slurry spreader. Uh, we use the S-Series. I don't really use too many vultures, so yeah, the S-Series will be quite a fun tractor to use. I don't really know why we get the front weight every time, because we don't need the front weight, necessarily. Maybe we do with this, but some jobs we certainly don't. Do we have GPS? Do we have GPS? Probably not, but I want to use it anyway because as you've seen, I make a terrible effort when it comes to doing this kind of thing. It's like a, a snake. That's how wiggly it is. Right, so you can pretty much judge how large this is going to be, how wide. All right. I need to slide this across a bit. There we go. Put the GPS on, and off we go. And we have an endless supply of slurry. Right, that's a bit too far over. It turns out. There could well be an offset on here. Might have accidentally put an offset on. I don't know why I would have done, but yeah, I think I have done. How's that? Should be perfect, I'm hoping. 0% offset and totally aligned, perfect, good. Right, okay, the, uh, the front weight has decided to go all the way down to the ground. Must have caught the wrong button. Uh, but yes, that is looking much better. We have just 12 minutes to do this in. And now we're sorted out, we should be okay. It's just when we get to the end, when I turn, I need to make sure the tractor goes far enough out so that it turns enough to be in line with the next pass of the field. Otherwise, it's going to be going back down this side again, just for the first little section. Oh, by the way, good news, my computer turned up today. But it may be a little while until I get a video out on it. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Alright, so if I switch that off there and turn 
about here, because it can't hit the tree either. Should be perfect. Good. Right, so I think we're going to be very productive here. Should do a very good job. This I just can't get over the size of the slurry tanker though. Absolutely huge. I forgot to look at the pay as well. Don't know how much it was, but it should be quite good, even though it is only a 12 minute job. And we'll likely get it done in less than 12 minutes, as we have absolutely no overlap at all. We will see. Look how straight that is. Now, this is going to be harder. We can't auto turn. There is a massive rock there. So I just have to do it manually. Mm, it's good enough, it will do. But just a few more up and down like this and we'll be done. It's always nice when you're doing each job. Uh, especially, uh, well, I think we should probably forget about that episode with the Fent Farmer back there. Oh dear, that did not look too good. And I can't believe the farmer at the end said, great work. Said, really? You must be blind, that was awful work. I should have been sacked, I should have had no pay at all, that was just awful. <laughs> what GPS does for you is really good. So as you can see, it is not going to cover the entire field. Um, we might have to come back down this bit, but as we've said before, there is a leeway, so I don't know. Uh, if we do have to come back up again, then it will be only a very small fraction of what there is there. It might even take the job at the end of here. We shall see. But no doubt about it, the GPS is just so handy. A bit of a zoom in here. I always like looking at the tyres on these machines to see how heavy the machine is. I suppose it could just be the tyre pressure which is low. But it's so much more dynamic than it ever used to be. It's very good. Uh, so looking at the progress bar up there, we're going to be close, but it looks like... Oh, will we do it? It looks like we're just about not going to do it. <laughs> Let's just see. Uh, maybe we will. Look at this. That always happens though. So if we just spin around up here, we'll literally have to cover just a tiny amount, a few metres, and it will take the job. Progress bar has almost disappeared. Ready? Now. Now. Please? Thank you. And we didn't really get too much money out of that, but it's okay. We'll be fine. Next job is nothing. So uh, we probably won't be doing any more on here anyway. But hopefully in the next episode we'll be doing that sugar beet field over there. The one I made a, a bit of a mess of. But as for today, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And I will return very soon with more on Goldcrest Valley. Until then, thanks again and see you again soon. Bye for now.